How's it going? Happy Tuesday, Peter. That's Hutch. I'm Hutch. Yep, <laughs> Peter and Hutch. At some point, this will come across as in any way professional. Uh, I'm not sure why we nope. would start or why we would even aspire to such a thing. But here we are, uh, Tuesday night, June 25th. It's the 25th of June. And uh, guess what? We're still talking about Brandon Ayuk's stupid little social media. It's so bad, Jake. I'm so sick of this shit. I'm so sick of this shit. And I know. And I think I probably gave him too much leeway last time. I was being a little too deferential. But like (laughs) him calling a meeting with the 49ers, like, I'm panicking about this. Do you want to meet and clarify things? They're like, sure. We'll tell you what we're offering. And you can take it or not. And then he'll go, why don't you respect me? And be like, we love you, but this is what we're offering. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, buddy. This isn't uh, this isn't low stakes for anybody involved. And uh, when we're talking about <laughs> tens of millions of dollars a year, uh, things are going to be a bit more "quote unquote" personal for Brandon Ayuk. Uh, if you didn't catch it today, the the news was that Brandon Ayuk called a meeting with the 49ers. Apparently, this was his idea. And something that I've noted throughout this process is that Brandon Ayuk is a pretty sharp dude in in general. I found him to be uh, witty and insightful. He's quiet, but I I have not found that to uh, indicate in any way a lack of intellect. He, that intellect is not helping him right now, Jake. Um, This is a smarter person and a dumber person would both step away from this situation and let their agents handle it. And Brandon is right in the sweet spot of truly being smart enough to be able to handle this himself, but not being smart enough to know that that's not the way that this should go for his own benefit. Um, So him calling this meeting and then him going on the Instagram, which just put down the phone, buddy, just put it down. I mean, unless you want to watch Dieter and Hutch, but like, uh, (laughs) With, with this social media stuff, all this is saying yeah. is that to me is that this dude is panicking and I can't blame him. Uh, I'd be panicking too because I am not, I, I would, this would be way worse if I were in this guy's shoes. But uh, I also don't have the ability to go play for 31 other NFL teams. I don't have 31 other newspapers clamoring at the door or 31 other radio stations coming right. for me. I'd be freaking out way more than this dude. At the same time, man, this is not a good look for him. And it does not help his negotiating stance. It does not give him any more negotiating power with the San Francisco 49ers. I think they have him right where they want him. Yeah, here is sort of my pitch to Brandon Ayuk. Um, That's my throw down your Put phone. down the phone, Brent. <laughs> Put down yeah. the phone, Brent. Put down the phone um, because it's truly it's the phone that's doing this. It's not like <laughs> it's the internet. <laughs> It, Jake's finally reading a book I gave to him like six months ago about yeah, the perils um, of social media. <laughs> it, it's like when you take philosophy 101 and you're like, dude, just Socrates, brother. I mean, <laughs> what a guy. Um, <laughs> but but I read a book about stoicism. Now I am impervious <laughs> to any outside right. noise. Right. You're like fucking Descartes. You start smoking cigarettes. You know, you start. I started like doing that for another Kimu. reason. Right, you start acting like Camus because you think girls are, are going to think it's hot, and you're just yeah. like nothing matters. And How'd that work out like, for you, you know? Jake? Not, uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do oh, it. No, I didn't. I didn't do it. <laughs> um, As you but, were saying, but what he should do is throw the phone into another atmosphere, like leave it. Like have get one of those. Get one of those. Like um, remember how kids in middle school would get the five uh, number phones, where like you can only call your parents. He should have oh, one that's wow, yeah. just his agent and his agent can call him and no one yeah. else can call him. And he should yeah. go somewhere nice and warm yeah. where he can work out. And that's right. I don't know, like try, try something new. Maybe stoicism might work. Maybe Buddhism. I don't know. <laughs> try some for a few weeks. Hey, play cribbage. My girlfriend and I have been playing cribbage. We just, yeah. you know, it's wow. an old person's game, but you just yeah. go around. I've become addicted to it. It's a pretty lame thing to be addicted to, but oh Hey, God. like, it's slow. You can only focus on playing cribbage. It's great. Yeah. Um, that's my hey. pitch. I think go play cribbage. 
I, I and legitimately, the less he does, the more this will work out for him. Because again, yeah. he's already made millions more just because the market has moved and he did nothing. And uh, heed the advice of your experience. Heed that that worked out pretty well for you in the past. Keep doing that because at some point, push is going to have to come to shove for him. And push is going to have to come to shove for 49ers. And the 49ers are sitting right now and saying, we don't got to do a damn thing. And Brandon Ayuk is by sort of doing all this social media stuff, which will have no positive effect. I, I, I think that somewhere deep down, there's a belief that it will galvanize the fan base and that it will put pressure on John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers front office to do something. Uh, that is the stupidest tactic I've ever heard. It will do none of those things. And all it can do is hurt you. I've never known right. anyone to win by tweeting or Instagram commenting or TikTok in a video. Never known anyone to win. I do know a lot of people who have lost. I've known a ton of people who have lost. It is basically like two people ever have won and 50 million people have lost, if right. not more. And we're not even it's talking just... like small claims court losses. We're talking like lost your job, lost your family. Divorce attorneys don't even need to hire PIs anymore. People just tell on themselves. That's that's my message. I'm with you 100%. Take your trainer. Go to Bora Bora and yep. get yourself a phone where you can only text with T9. Go to the Azores. Go to the Azores right off of Brazil, uh, Portugal. Pretty, yeah. It's actually weirdly cheap to go to Portugal. No yeah. one go there and raise the prices. Uh, That's right. Go, go to these beautiful islands. They've got some some birds. They've got some some pineapples that only grow native to them. That's uh, some. They have the uh, the only uh, coffee growing plantation in uh, Europe. Go go hmm. to Azor. I mean, it's relax, it's, it, it's like it's like twenty miles off the coast of Morocco, though. It's ba yeah. It's not really Europe. It's Europe. Europe. Okay. I don't like. It does that sound lovely. That, up. that was disturbing. Listen, <laughs> we talk about Europe. We should. We all should. We're gonna have to clip clip that and just. <laughs> That's go. our real. That's the best thing we have in the show, Jake. And the Dieter only real we've Europe. come up with. Um. No. 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 People are still angry about the Javon Baker one, but who will have the last laugh? <laughs> Them. Um. <laughs> It's, yeah, I, I, listen, uh, I, I uh, am flip-flopping all over here. I mean, just call me John Kerry. Call me Rainbow Sandal. I'm just, I could not be flip-flopping faster. Uh, the John Kerry wow. reference is for all the people my age. Well done. Um, it's, I was of the mindset that IUK and the 49ers, this was a couple of weeks, if not months ago, I was of the mindset that the 49ers and Brandon IUK could get this thing done before training camp or early in training camp. And then a couple of weeks ago, I go, I don't know about that. You sure about that? You sure about that? And I said, no. I said, no, I'm not sure about that. And in fact, this feels like this could drag out for a long time. But everything Brandon IUK has done over the last week or two, uh, has given me the indication that, in fact, uh, they will get something done here. Uh, I do want to note a couple of things here. Uh, one, Brandon and I responding to uh, news that we all knew. Apparently, it was news to Brandon and I today, which uh, yeah. maybe he has been. Maybe he had been taking the advice of Ben off his phone. But Nick Wagner could have told you this weeks ago. I believe John Lynch said it openly in a press conference before the draft. Uh, but they they shopped Brandon Ayuk around. I, I can't believe that that's news to anybody. Uh, clearly not a listener to the Dieter and Hutch podcast or even Fort Anders game day, if we're being honest. Um, but Ayuk commenting on some bullshit aggregation report uh, about that. Uh, they're so bad. It's getting, it's getting, they, worse all follow, the day. they all follow these aggregators. It's, it's so weird. Well, they, you know, they don't, it's not as if they're interested in high quality content here. They're, you know, do you think there's a lot of NFL players that are out here like, man, I could really go for a think piece on the cover three <laughs> defense. Wonder what the ringer has in store for me today. <laughs> oh man. What a, what an incredible deep cut on the athletic. Um, <laughs> like, no, no, these guys, the, about to say something very mean but like it's they, they're no this is not highbrow shit and um so yeah they all follow these aggregators or more specifically a bunch of troll people follow the aggregators and then at 
the players, which is incredible. Yeah. And uh, that kind of snitching behavior I established long ago while I was active on social media got you immediately blocked. If you were a uh, snitch, you got blocked. <laughs> it was just it, and there was a good stretch there for a while. Uh, while it was the wild, wild west and like people, act, athletes and reporters and everyone actually handled their own Twitter account uh, when they were people out here snitching, they out. Regardless, as I was saying, Brandon, I uh, responding to a report. But I thought the Niners was never trying to trade me. Um, OK, I mean, they also don't want him. He is clearly going for something here. Uh, what it is, who's to I say? Just, I just don't know what, like, what his strategy is achieving. Because what happens with stuff like we're this talking is, about him, right? So what happens? But like, people, I think when something doesn't make sense on social media, and you go, okay, people are like, oh, like, no, there's a strategy to it. And people are like, okay, so what's the strategy? And you go, no, it's strategy. And you're like, well. Like, you no, know, explain to me how it benefits. Sounds like him. the Trump like, presidency. Right. It's just it's like, it's no, not... no, no. He knows what he's doing. It's like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't think it's this like, through. I just don't understand how it benefits him. Because if you're the 49ers and you hear nothing from him, yeah. And yeah, he's like, no, I'm not freaking out. Offer. I'd be like, shit. Oh, he's, is he serious? Yeah. But you see him posting on all this stuff. But he hasn't actually requested a trade. Like he really doesn't. Right. He's just hanging out with Jane Daniels, who I think he just hangs out with in general and likes because they're friends I mean, from Arizona State. But it's like convenient because it's like, oh, well, then this makes it look. What if we play? You know, like, oh, I want to go to Washington. No yeah. one wants to go there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's That's, be honest. Yeah, oh, I Pleasure. know. Th I know that Dan Snyder doesn't own the team anymore, but that toxicity doesn't just wash out with one. They still one have rinse. sewage running through the stadium. Like, come on. It, by the way, it's yeah. Commanders Field now. FedEx didn't even want their name on that stadium anymore. It's brutal. It's brutal. Um, want to also tough. bring up uh, this quote from uh, ESPN former Steeler Ryan Clark, who uh, seems to want to be the NFL's Oprah. That's the only vibe I'm getting off of him right now. Uh, this is a bit of a long one, so stick with me. Uh, I suppose Brandon Ayuk had an interview with him and Crowder and whatever. They got their little media thing going on down in Miami. Uh, when he was sitting with us, he said that he was taking these negotiations personally. The way that they have negotiated with him, the way that they have told him what he's, he's worth what he's worth, it has touched him. It has affected him. He says he wants to be in San Francisco first, but is comfortable playing elsewhere if that's something that the San Francisco 49ers are willing to do via trade. And I will tell you this. When he sat with us, he did not walk into the room alone. First, it was Brandon Ayuk. Second, it was Jaden Daniels. I'm not a tea leaf reader, but it seems like Ayuk wouldn't mind playing in Washington. Um, that is NFL Oprah Ryan Clark. Uh, it touched him. It affected him. Real quick, I welcome to I the honestly, big boy table. I honestly, genuinely appreciate the dramatization of that because <laughs> he could have just like, left it like, "Yeah, he was in there with Jane Daniels." I think that's 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 interesting. You know, interesting. Yeah, right. But he's like, "I'm not a tea." Like it's it was you don't you don't get on ESPN without taking a modicum of a take and being able to make it grandiose. Like I listened to Stephen A. Smith try to give a coherent take on Connor McDavid winning the Con Smythe last night, and uh, it killed it killed me inside. It killed me inside because he doesn't he didn't know he didn't know. But to be able to take just just a little thing, a little kernel that's not even a take. It's right. it's it, it, it's an take in its infancy. It's a zygote of a take, and right. to turn it into this magisterial oration is other level. He did and not walk into the room alone. First, it was Brandon Ayuk. What? This is this is uh, somebody vamping. That's what this is. This is a filibuster. And that's what you have to do to get on ESPN, apparently. And, and to do that while also referencing your podcast that's separate from ESPN I mean, is that's like... good work. That's, that's good stuff. Also, that's, what uh, analysis. As a, McDav as a McDavid aside, I start watching four games of... of of hockey 
Dieter's been locked in all playoffs all year. I'm like, yeah. I just, I, I'm liking, you know, they, they haven't produced, but I'm liking the Panthers four check. That's right. Um, it's just, it's good stuff. The, the, hockey, Jake, playoff hockey, Jake, man. Jake, Jake getting into playoff hockey because I basically force fed it to him with just <laughs> texts of insane tactical breakdowns uh, very much made my summer. Uh, listen, I, I am of the mindset that this gets done. Uh, this guy's cracking. And he's under contract. The, the idea, the way that they have negotiated with him, the way that they have told him why he's worth what he's worth, it has touched him. It has affected him. Um, buddy, grow up. And if you don't like it and you think that offer's no good, congratulations. Demand a trade. And I think the 49ers might oblige you. Um, they, they, might, they might figure something out for you. So it's your move here, buddy. But just whining about you don't like right. the offer, but not countering with anything other than here's my offer, not count, not using any of the leverage you have and instead doing this half leverage game or this, this infantile social media platform, man, it's, it's not a good look. And I say this as somebody who still remembers and listen, I, I, I don't care. I, I want Brandon Ayuk to be a happy guy. I don't care about the San Francisco 49ers and their personal well-being. I mean, it, it, we talk about them. But it's not to say that I live and die with the wins and losses. I just want to have something interesting to talk about as it pertains to the team. Um, it makes a very strange, strange show given the level of fandom. But like, we're gonna we're gonna give it to you. We're gonna give it to you clean here. And so I, I'm not somebody who is out here advocating for the team. But Brandon needs to figure out what it is he's doing. Because it makes me sound as if I'm a shill for the goddamn team by simply yeah. pointing out that he doesn't seem to know what he's doing here, and he's going to get his ass kicked repeatedly in perpetuity if he doesn't come up with something. His agents need to step the fuck up and do their job. He needs to step the fuck down and let his agents do their job. And ultimately, I do think the 49ers will step up and sweeten the offer a little bit. But right now, what indie, what, what? why why would they bother giving him a better offer when all he's going to do is whine and mope about it to nobody in particular oh to nfl oprah and what 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 are you going to do about it show up to training camp before the first preseason game because that's when the fines start kicking in they have all the leverage brandon Ayuk has done nothing to take the power in this situation and there are moves he can make he hasn't made them yet this is this is not a good look for him um, he, right. he is, a, I still maintain he is a sharp guy. He's a smart guy, but he just looks like he is in dramatically over his head on this, this right this now. This is, it's something where it's like, you know, so ideally he wants to get to like 30 million, which the Amon Ross yeah. and Brown deal apparently was more like 28. It was reported as, as 30. It doesn't yeah. matter, but it's, it's like, again, we're talking about a couple million here or there and and he should get to 28 right yeah he should get to, but it's also like he's gonna get to 28 that's how the negotiations work they just take time to get there but the more you do this the more it erodes trust in a team being like yeah we want to invest in you right for five years and you know and debo requested a trade and there's been drama with other stuff but when you take to social media and and it's like taking to social media and, and doing cryptic stuff. I honestly think is is fine. I'm yeah, like, it doesn't doesn't it's, do anything. It just doesn't help but, your cause, and it just highlights it, that you don't know what you're doing. To do it like repeatedly in this way, it just it just seems like he's not confident he's going to get the deal. It doesn't do anything to the 49ers because Shanahan and Lynch like repeatedly are like we don't care what happens we don't look at that shit <laughs> yeah. like if a player says something to us in person which is why the yeah. meeting is significant which they're yeah. probably like yeah like let's meet to see how much you're sweating and oh right you're sweating a lot so you call you call the you office. called an informal meeting to discuss a serious contract negotiation i mean that's just Call in a timeout the second after you see the play. That's just uh nope, nope. I don't know what I'm doing. It's it, it's really kind of embarrassing. 
And you know what? As much as I'm pinning this currently on Brandon Ayuk, the, what what are, what are his agents doing? What, the people that he is paying to represent him, the people that will be getting a significant chunk, a a notable chunk of this new contract. What what are they doing to help this guy right now? Because he clearly is not good at this. He is good at a very many things. One of which being a wide receiver in Kyle Shanahan's offense. This is not something he's good at. He's not good at the social media game. He's not good at negotiating contracts on his own. He's good at catching footballs, being a great receiver for Brock Purdy, good at talking to some guys in the media, some others not so much. Like he's got to be, I'm, he has a tremendous amount of skill. This ain't his, this ain't it. Realistically, like before this offseason, he should be told by his agents. Hey, this is going to suck. Like, this is going to be yeah. the worst. And maybe he was. Listen, maybe he probably was told all this. But, yeah. like, this is going to be awful. We're going to tell them what we want. They're going to say no. We're going to tell them again. They're going to say no. It's going to linger. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to feel personal. You're going you're gonna, to, yeah. It, and it will be personal to a certain yeah. extent. Yeah. And you will be sweating. You'll be stressing. What you need to do is let us do our work. And we will get a deal done for around this number. And if we can't, we will tell you and we will explore what options we have. Yeah. But trust us, it's going to suck. We're going to get through this. And, and, and I'm sure, again, that he's been told that, but. Not recently it's, enough. Uh, it's just not, it's, uh, it's not productive. And I, I don't know. It's just it's like uncomfortable to, you know, see it. <laughs> yeah. OK, so let's let's like let's let's leave it at that. Uh, let's go back into the comments here a little bit. Um, yeah, th- this is a good point by Thomas Pfeiffer. Uh, bottom line is he is under contract. And, and that leads us to, you know, the, the main point, which is. 49ers hold all the chips here. Now, again, there are moves that Brandon and I you can make that can put some of those chips or at least, you know, put some more chips in the game and maybe, uh, right. you know, it doesn't take anything away from the 49ers, but dilutes the pot a bit. And one of those, and, and by the way, the playbook pretty clear. It's exactly what Debo Samuel did a couple of years ago. Act like you'll, you're totally offended by every offer, act a fool on social media, do all this stuff, flirt with other teams, all these things. And I feel like Ayuk is trying to do that and just not doing it well enough. But the most important one is say, I want to be traded. You need to trade me. Because now, if you think that, if at any point you think that the 49ers can be swayed by public perception, that's one inference. And that inference is generally incorrect. They, They are very insular there. But if you have 31 other teams who are now in the ball game because there has been a public trade demand. If you have 31 other fan bases that are getting after their general managers, like their sports talk radio station to be diluted into. And yeah, yeah, like they are, if you see what Steelers fan, they are like so confident that I, you can Debo. They're like, but they're coming. We're, we're getting, we're getting someone. I mean, they'll get them once they're good and dead. Um, <laughs> like there's no nice way of putting that. Like the, the idea that the 49ers would give some sort of prime Debo Samuel or prime Brandon Ayuk to the Pittsburgh Steelers seems ludicrous. Um, and by the way, if you're getting, if the 49ers were to trade Brandon Ayuk, which I know they have no interest in doing, um, at any reasonable rate, it would, it, the non reasonable rate, they'll do it. And the non reasonable rate is like, the Ricky Williams trade, like right. you better you better pony the fuck up, and you're going to be ponying us, up year after year. Give us two ones, a three. <laughs> and uh, a I think it's I think it's even more than that. I mean, they gave up three first round picks for Trey fucking Lance. Um, we're talking same ball game, and listen, I I think the 49ers might be well served to see if somebody is interested in giving up that kind of a haul even today. But ultimately, if the Niners wanted to trade Brandon Ayuk, they would have done it before the draft. 
which we knew and talked about. Apparently, Brandon and I found out about it today. So um, it's a tough break. And, Put down the phone. Everything will work out for him. And just to close that. this, uh, it'll what will end up happening, he will, in my view, sign a monstrous contract for probably $28 million a year. And yeah. what will happen, people will be like, they'll point to people like us who will be like, you weren't handling that right. And it's like, well, you weren't. And you got your money. Yeah. But negotiations take time but it, it didn't help like it didn't move stuff no. along and it should be noted that it, the debo samuel stuff while it was effective or maybe it was all just window dressing and it would have happened that way regardless impossible for us to say from our vantage but it doesn't it doesn't help your relationship You sign a new contract, and the 49ers have been looking towards the end of that contract since he signed it. Um, It does not foster goodwill. It's it's a marriage that's not exactly on strong footing to start. So if anything gets rocky at any point, it's just going to fall apart. And um, Brandon and I, you can Debo Samuel are very different people, and they're very different players. And they're ultimately handling this differently I just think Brandon's not very good at doing the Debo Samuel game plan. He doesn't have enough personality, doesn't have enough uh, charisma to to pull off a lot of those moves of a diva wide receiver. And so he's kind of going through the motions of being a diva. Uh, buddy, just be yourself, and it will work out for you. In the meantime, bad looks, bad looks. Um, let's stay on the 49ers here. There are a well, Bleacher Report which we all know does, you know, you want to talk about highbrow work, Bleacher Report. Um, they yeah, had a, got a, a Bleacher Report settlement uh, in the mail. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, they leaked all your information. Um, it's like, yep. how'd you get this email? Don't ask. Don't ask how we got this email. Um, they had uh, They had some possible guys that we might know who could be cut in the preseason before the season starts. And uh, I'll just run through the names here real quick. The four that interested me, uh, Juju Smith Schuster out of new England, um, obviously hasn't been ideal for Juju in new England. Now they're going to Drake may and uh, you know, they, they brought in some wide receiver talent. They got a new offense. Uh, Juju might be on the skids there. We got Peyton Turner, the defensive end for the saints who, just has not played, but he's 25 years old. He's a former first round pick, six foot six, 270 pounds. Uh, Khalil Herbert, the running back in Chicago, who has always been um, foreseen as the number one and never actually taken the number one job in Chicago. Now he might not have a job in Chicago. And uh, John Michi, the former Alabama wide receiver, who, uh, of course, beat leukemia but could not beat the Texans' depth chart last year, only 16 catches and 158 yards. Um, any of those names interest you for the 49ers, given what we know about the Niners roster and just presuming that all these guys are made available um, as Bleacher Report predicts or insinuates? Yeah, yeah I mean, listen, any, as much as they any love Any one their... stand out? Uh, last two, Milano, like... Oh uh, yeah, I didn't you even know. mention Milano. Milano, um, one of the linebacker Buffalo. Um, I didn't put him on. I, I didn't uh, delineate it from the list. I found the reasoning to be weak. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm with you. I I, I think Buffalo. Sean McDermott's going to get rid of one of his best defenders on a team that yeah. doesn't have a good defense. But you know, it does. I would take him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the one that's logical, like Mechi. Um, yeah, 49ers don't need uh, they could use a six wide receiver, but like Mechie at Alabama just fucking produced, man. Yeah. Um he was Jamison Williams and, before Jamison Williams. Yeah. I just yeah. loved and it was always like, you know, there were these hyped up other prospects who panned out at wide receiver, but Mechie was the guy who like he was fed in that offense. Like yeah. he was always making monster catches. And so whenever I think of him. Um, you know, he missed his rookie year with uh, leukemia, Yeah, you know? So like if they cut him again, I I don't know where this list is really coming from, but John Mechie's a guy I'd love. Yeah. The the Mechie one is something that 
is absolutely fair. That depth chart in Houston is stacked, uh, and he has not been able to break through. Um, this is something to note as it pertains to any team in the NFL this preseason. When you're talking about rookies, that first training camp is so goddamn important. And it's not even important just for the basis of you're fighting for a job or whatever. You just need to be in the ball game. You just need to be someone who is present, someone that people think about on the coaching staff that first year. If you can't get your foot in that first year, it's so difficult for you to climb up the depth chart a year later when they bring in a new rookie class. And now you're not even somebody that they just watched and felt good and called when they drafted. You're not even the new thing anymore. You're an old thing that doesn't have any more experience than the new things. And uh, they're always going to go for the new toy over the old toy. And uh, I, I think about this with Cam Latu a lot. Like, dude, what, I they say it was an injury. Okay. But like not getting any serious training camp last year. I don't know if he'll even be in training camp this year. If you don't get that first training camp and at least get through it, but guys who get injuries or something like that, some of it is terrible luck. Some of it is terrible play. Some of it is just bad circumstance, but like it is so hard. It is yeah. so hard. And there are so many good players who fall through the cracks and wind up on a third, fourth, fifth team and never get their careers off the ground because they couldn't get that first training camp under their, their belt. And John Mechie is a great example of that. Like he could be a really good player, but it probably won't be in Houston just because he's been behind the eight ball multiple times now. So I I'm with you on that. Um, Peyton Turner is a name that had not dawned on me at all as a possibility. Um, he's the only guy at a position of clear need. Here for the 49ers. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure he's the guy, but 25 <laughs> years old, 6'6, 270 pounds with long ass arms. Like, he he has not been on the field. He has not yeah, played they, very many games and he has not been good when he's played. But like, Chris Kasarek has done more with less, baby. And they really they do need guys, a five tech. They love guys off the scrap heap who have some potential, some measurables. And they just say, okay, come here. We'll see if you have anything. Yeah. If you don't, we will cut your ass. Yeah, it do, doesn't mean anything to us. Yeah. If you do, we'll turn you into a, an Arden key type or yeah, or not. We'll see. Yeah, we're, we're going to make you a marginal amount more money. Um, yeah. It, listen, I, that, that's that's where my eyes went immediately. Peyton Turner. And it's a name that uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going, up on the, uh, it's going up on the dry erase board as somebody to check in on every now and again. You know, it's, I got the schedule. I got the Warriors mm. tax numbers and the Giants upcoming series. And then I'm, I'm just going to put on just names to check. It's a big you can go to Home Depot. You can get like this for like eight bucks. You can get a huge, huge whiteboard and you just put it up with 3M strips. It's great. Um, let's talk about Clay Thompson. Yep. You you are not bullish that the Warriors and Clay Thompson are going to get back together for the kids. That's well. Explain explain where you feel the Clay Thompson Warriors relationship is right now, and where you think it will go. I feel like it's at a point where the market Clay hopes for isn't going to materialize, and he's going to face a question of do I go back for like two years, 40, something like that. Mm. Or do I take like slightly less and leave at a spite? And, uh, and I know that sounds like <laughs> wild based on where we were a few weeks ago and yeah. talking about what he might get offered, but there's like five teams with cap space. Yeah. And one of them being the Detroit Pistons. So you can take their money. Right. I'm not even it's sure the, they'd it, offer. It's the Pistons. It's the Jazz. The Magic. 76ers who have Joel Embiid and no one else. They have three players um, under contract currently. In fact, I can give crazy. it to you because I, I texted it to you earlier today. Uh, and the then Philadelphia have, 76ers have legitimately four players under contract. Here, If they had to field the team today, it would be Joel Embiid at $51 million a year. 
basketball Paul Reed <laughs> at seven point seven million dollars a year. Good player, Paul Reed. Uh, yeah, Jeff, former former Warrior Jeff Doughton, uh, who has a team option for two point one million dollars. I'm not sure if that option's been picked up or not. <laughs> and then Ricky Council the fourth, who I didn't know was a person. <laughs> uh, one one point <laughs> eight nine good. million. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is a restricted free agent. Given that, yeah. By the way, Detroit, just go do it. Just I want to have some fun. Go give Tyrese Maxey the full offer sheet. I know no one does offer sheets oh, in the yeah. NBA. Fucking do it. Let's have some fun. Come on, Trajan. It's, also, it's also like why isn't why isn't there more of that? Of just like you want this player, pay him the most because we have no one. Yeah. We have a dog yeah. shit team. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna pay him the max. So yeah. if you don't want to, we happily will. I listen. If I'm, I'm the Detroit, De- I'm the Detroit Pistons. Like it, it's not. What w- w- what's right. the counter argument for not doing this? Oh, we need to maintain our relationships in the league for what? So you can keep losing. Like, <laughs> you know yeah. what would help your team a lot more. Than all these relationships, which have led you nowhere but to the bottom, having Tyrese Maxey, who's a really good basketball player and has scored fifty points multiple times. Um, yeah, I think the team. There's, no, there's another team in there too. Orlando's in there at about. Orlando needs to actually do a little bit of manipulation to give Clay what he would want. But um, and apparently they have not been hot on the trail as it was once suspected. So it's you've got Orlando, the Thunder, 76ers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Jazz say we want an it asset. Doesn't, doesn't it doesn't align with what the Jazz doesn't want? It doesn't align make, with the Pistons. Does Clay want to go play in Utah? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, yeah, that, I mean that's the other ball game too. Like everyone goes, oh, Oklahoma City and Clay. First off, uh, Oklahoma City, if they're going to spend money on anything, they're going to go spend it on a center. They're going to go get somebody who can help out Chet Holmgren. They want um, Hartenstein. Yeah, with a little bit more heft. Uh, Hartenstein would be great for them, and they have the money to do that. They also don't have to do anything because they have so many draft picks and so much talent and now cap space. They can legitimately just go take someone off another team. They can just say, hey, you know this player that is begrudgingly playing for you or you you want to get rid of? Hey, Kevin Durant, you know how things ain't working out? In Phoenix, that's what the Rockets are apparently doing. Rockets with, are with, trying to with make who? a move for Durant. Durant, you know, at some point he'll find happiness, and I hope, I hope it for him soon. Um, it's that's but, the. Uh, ooh. I hope. I guess. Um, I'm with I'm with you. Like, where, where's the market for Clay Thompson? I'll tell you this: there's a market for him in San Francisco. Like, I think the Warriors. I think the Warriors, if push came to shove, would gladly give him the third year. I think, in fact, Draymond Green has three years and seventy-seven million remaining on his contract. The player option that third year—that's off the top of my head. I uh, hope I'm right there. Yeah, that sounds right. Three years, seventy-seven million with the player option. Just give him that. Just give him that. That's twenty-four, twenty-five million dollars a year. That's a fair market deal. Give him the player option so that if he does want to leave because Steph is going and Kerr is going and you know Draymond, that player option, they gave it to him. It didn't really make sense. It doesn't line up with anything else. They just gave it to him because he asked for it nicely. And there was a and he he got the Pistons to actually give him a contract offer. And so they said, fine, we'll give you that. Clay, just go get the contract offer from the Pistons like Draymond did. Yep. Or or from Utah. You don't actually have to go there. Come back to Mike Dunleavy and he'll say, ha ha, well played, sir. And he'll give you the third year and they'll give you the 24, 25. You know, they'll give you exactly Draymond's contract and then everything will just be fine. It will just be fine. You wave Chris Paul at the end of this week. You yeah, sign and he finishes, Cl- finishes what? The sixth seed, maybe? If we're lucky if they're lucky. Sure. I mean, listen, the Dallas Mavericks <laughs> were fighting. The Dallas Mavericks were legitimately fighting for a playoff seeding in the final weeks week of the season, and they won the Western Conference. There's there's there are good teams in the Western Conference. Don't get me wrong. Like Minnesota is good. Oklahoma City is good. Denver is obviously a former champion. Very good. 
Um, the Western Conference is going to get better next year. But the notion that the Warriors are just barbecue chicken, I think, is is ludicrous. Um, right. If they do the right, if, if so long as they don't lose Clay Thompson, you can lose Chris Paul. That doesn't do anything for me, one way or another. You can go sign Spencer Dinwiddie to the mid level. That's the same shit. Um, or go out and get uh, Jonas Valanciunas to be your, your starting center, and maybe somebody can give you 25 a game because you do have the mid level now that you can play with at about $12 million a year if you're yeah. under the aprons. So I think the Warriors have a chance to actually do some pretty good improvement. And But it, they have to have Clay Thompson. And everyone going, oh, well, you know, the offer's not really there. Or they're not offering a third. I've heard it both, both ways, and very good reporters are giving it out three different ways. Here's the deal. The Warriors are not dicking around with this. They're just not going to show the full hand because every dollar is vitally important. You know, every cent on this thing is worth a buck or two. Yeah. So, if they so can avoid the fucking punishments uh, that the league has instated specifically I mean, because they're, of them. Yeah, they don't have to worry. I mean, I know everyone is, you know, the big buzzword of the week and rightly so is second apron because the new collective bargaining agreement comes in on July 1st. and the Warriors for ever have been a second apron team, quote unquote, because they've had this incredibly high payroll. The second Chris Ball comes off the books on the 28th. Yeah. And by the way, every indication, I, I'm a little bit surprised um, that they haven't extended that deadline, that they haven't pushed it just a little bit because it hurts Chris Paul 0%. In fact, they might even give him a million dollars just to move it by a week. Yep. Because if Clay does leave, then you want that Chris Paul contract on the books so that you can trade it for anything or just fucking keep them. Yeah. You can't yeah, lose I mean, both that's of a huge, them. It's a massive salary slot that yeah. becomes incredibly valuable to any team trying to make a maneuver, not really this year, but especially next year. Well, like, the salary spot is replaced technically, sort of, kind of. Yeah, next year. Next year, it's definitely replaced because they got to give Jonathan Kaminga an extension, and he's a thirty yeah. million dollar a year player in the modern NBA. I'm not. I'm not saying he should be. I'm just saying he right. is. Um, I think the Warriors. Sure. Yeah. I, I think the Warriors will be fine, and I think that this will all get worked out. And I'm a little bit surprised that Orlando is so cool on him because I'm not sure who else has taken Orlando's money. And this might drag out yeah. a little bit is, is kind of where it's I'm a at. weird free agency period where everyone's adjusting to these new rules. Like no one really has money. Yeah. Malik Monk saw what was going on. He's like, oh shit, I'm not, I don't it's say what you will about Malik Monk. Malik Monk has always been a very sharp guy and he, yeah, you're exactly right. He looked at the situation. He said, it's, fuck um, that. Fuck that. It's, it's that thread. Have you ever seen that thread where, <laughs> The guy's like, you don't want to be outside. <laughs> you, you're like, you think you you think you want to be out here. You don't want to be out here. Yeah, yeah. I, I I've I've heard every stand up comedian for the last ten years do that about like dating things yeah. like that. It's just like you don't want this. You don't want any part yeah. of. It. You don't want this evil. No, <laughs> it's it's and the it's it the uh, it's the Dewey Cox like. You don't want any yeah, part I, of this. Stuff. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Orlando or it's come come back. And if you don't I, like that, I don't know. Go on a go, go on a sabbatical, brother. You got a boat. Yeah, I mean that that's the other thing too. I mean, it, this is Clay's last big contract, so I can appreciate him. And by the way, you know the same argument we've made for Brandon Ayuk. Like this is his one big contract. Maybe he gets another one. Probably not. Yeah. Just mathematically he speaking, he could. I mean, he he's could. young. He doesn't take a beating like a lot of receivers, but we'll see. I mean, hard to imagine someone 30 years old signing a big money contract as a wide receiver unless you're like the best in the absolute game. And I think even so, the history would indicate don't do that if you're a team. But like, we know this one's there. And so let's just say, in all likelihood, this is the last big contract or the first big contract Brandon Ayuk will ever get. This is the last big contract. 
and it's not as big as the last one by an order of magnitude, but the last big contract Clay will ever get. So I get why he's trying to maximize it, and I have no problem with him playing his negotiation game, which has been fine, pretty clean on social media. Just wipe it off. Let you get passive aggressive. No problem with that. Passive aggressive is yep. good. Brandon Ayuk's just passive out here aggressive being is great. <laughs> Brandon Ayuk's out here just being aggressive and passive on news. I mean, this happened weeks ago, Brandon. You can't be coming in just late. Use emojis. Don't say don't, like if totally. You're, if you're gonna come on anything, just yeah. go. Hmm. Hmm. My favorite. My favorite was uh, there were a couple of. Yeah, it, it is really sad, but I, I mean, I guess I'm appreciative because I wouldn't have found out otherwise. Um, they're like, oh, Brandon Ayuk responded to uh, an Instagram post with a cryptic message. Motherfucker, there's nothing cryptic about, but I thought the Niners was never trying to trade me, question mark. That ain't that, cryptic. When people talk about the, the fall of, when people talk about the fall of civilization, it's going to be sentences like those that will be held up. Yeah. As he responded cryptically to an Instagram post of somebody fakes like a, how did, I can't how even did sp- American society fall? It's like, well, let's check out clutchpoints.com. It's All right. be clutchpoints.gov. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, that's the kind of government I can get behind. And here are four other governments that could work in a pinch. Um, <laughs> Ranking the top four governments that are ready to fall. <laughs> oligarchies? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, have you given any thought whatsoever to the NBA draft, which starts uh, tomorrow? It's in less Almost than 24 none, hours. but I did watch the two guys you sent me. Let's talk about P.J. Hall and Antonio Reeves, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what did you think about P.J. Hall, uh, the white Kavan Looney? I... You know, I was really curious who you were going to comp him to, because who do you comp him to? Who's who's who I, struck you in the film? It was tough because, like, I was trying to think. My, I'll just go gut feeling. I said Jonas yeah. Drebko, um, sure, which, like, sort of like a stretch four, but much more, much a better rebounder. He yeah. moves really well. Yeah. Also, what what is the NBA? What's it's going very on? difficult to say these days. What's the what deal <laughs> with basketball? Because there's guys like these where I'm like, this looks like an immediate player yeah. on a team. This, like this contribute. guy looks like he can play basketball. And he might just go undrafted. Uh, well, I know yeah. Draymond, he, you know, it's it's he is he is forever. a six foot eight to six foot nine, two hundred and forty pound white dude who definitely looks like they got him off the baseball team. All right. He plays for Clemson, can, which by the way, Clemson having a basketball team looks wrong. I don't know how to, I, I don't think I've ever verbalized that, but I just go like, that doesn't seem right. That seems incorrect. It does. But listen, listen, like I want North Carolina a having a football team. He averaged, <laughs> he averaged 14 in his, in his freshman year, then 22 and 25, yeah. then 25. You know, nine rebounds a game, had a 31 and 17 game. Like in the Atlantic Coast Conference, I've heard they're good at basketball there. So, yeah, PJ Hall, good player. And I can tell you, I can tell you as a fact that the Warriors really like him. I mean, as they should. If you watch that guy and you don't, and Steve, you you don't get the uh, the Steve Curse Spidey sense. I, I, I can't. I can't help you. That's one thing they sneaky missed. Where Saric was like good for in certain yeah. stretches, and then he fell out of the rotation because he wasn't yeah. really doing. He was what horrible on always, defense, and he couldn't shoot. Yeah, they've always needed like a, a like a second unit, like sort of stretch four who can yeah. hit like a mid range occasionally, maybe hit a corner three, get like three rebounds a game yeah. one offensive rebound they've been chasing that most spates okay. high for years they've Exa- been chasing like that most spates exa- and that's they i want think that david did. west in their life Ooh, maybe pj that's holds david mean. west david west was a hell of a player at xavier david Probably west is way too yoked to get comped by pj hall that's fair that's fair but pj hall i'll say when you watch him you go motherfucker strong doesn't look it but he's just throwing dudes around. Um, the guy that I think they should take, I haven't changed my opinion at all. It's been a month on uh, Antonio Reeves, a wing out of Kentucky. Uh, let me be very clear about this. 
Antonio Reeves is 24 years old. Uh, he cannot play a single lick of defense. He is uh, a complete liability on that side of the court. On the other hand, that motherfucker gets buckets. That dude can score at all three levels. And he, as the kids would say, or maybe this is not even kids anymore, but he's smooth with it. He is. They don't. Whoo, let me just be clear. clear. They, don't, they don't say that uh, okay. because they're okay. not saying that. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, forgive me for impugning the good good name of the kids. Did they say um, impugn too? Do the kids say impugn? The kids are, the, yeah, the kids, the TikTok generation saying impugning. Their, their vocabulary is off the charts. Yeah, kids um, kids on TikTok today just speak like uh, English barristers in court. Exactly. Um, what did you think of comp, Antonio Reeves? My comp for him, I, I want to know who, who, who you comped first, but I, I have one comp for him because I was thinking about it, yeah. partially because of shooting motion. You go first. Ooh, off the shooting motion, I'm interested to see who you say. My, I mean, my comp is uh, very specific, and it's not a fair comp to his game, but it's a comp to uh, my predicted output for him when he comes to the Warriors. This guy's a Jordan Poole replacement. And you can go, well, Dieter, they got rid of Jordan Poole because Jordan Poole really sucked. You know what that team could have used a little bit of last year? Jordan Poole without all the Jordan Poole. They could have used a guy right. like what the Warriors wouldn't have done to have Malik Monk on their basketball Emmanuel team. Quickly. With. I mean, Emmanuel, Emmanuel quickly is a great shot, too. I mean, that's a great shout. Um, what they wouldn't have done to have just somebody who can come off the bench, give you nothing on defense. I mean, just embarrass himself on that end of the court, but just drop in 12 points before you knew it. Basically, just say you are offense now. And that guy being like, hell yeah, brother, let's do this thing. That's yep. that's they need a little bit of that. And if you're picking at 52, one, an incredible advantage under the new CBA. You can sign these guys to four year deals without having to touch any of the exceptions. Basically, they're just it's free real estate now. Second yeah, round picks crazy. are free. <laughs> so there's a reason that all the good teams this past trading deadline are like, no, 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 we'll take your seconds. We'll take your seconds. If you are a team that's going to operate in the luxury tax at any point, you want all the seconds, all the seconds. Yep. And Oklahoma City is sitting there and they're like, we have 46 seconds over the next five drafts. And that I don't even think is hyperbole. I think it's somewhere in the 30s. Um, it's insane. They've the, been amount of, <laughs> the amount of trades that are just five second round picks. Um, yeah. my, my comp for Antonio Reeves, Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, Ooh. Interesting, because Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, when I put this nicely, sucked in the NBA Finals. Oh yeah, he's and watched. he's not really a three level <laughs> score. Well, he he was a little bit earlier yeah. in his career. He 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 doesn't have the same uh, driving, but like when I watched him on the Knicks and like earlier in his career, he could get to the yeah. rim a little bit better. The shooting motion to me is quite a bit similar to Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> That's um, you know what I'll give you that that they do have a similar swing. I yeah. think I think movement wise he reminds me a little bit more of Maxi. Um, yeah, the Ooh. way he he cuts what and a drives. Cop that is so future Detroit not, piston Tyrese Maxi. Right, right. But so so imagine like a, a, the best of those two, and just forget about the defense. Right. Um, no, he'll be not? like a he'll be like a minus player. But God yeah, yeah. damn it, we're gonna have some fun watching it. And like, you know what? For, That's yeah. a plus. That's a plus for me. You're just gonna have him and Pajemski out there, and Pajemski just like so stressed because he's <laughs> how just many charges to do I have to take? <laughs> By the way, I know it was like mentioned, but like Pajemski was bleeding every fucking game, like. That was insane. <laughs> like, because because I know he was taking a lot of charges, but just in general, he was, and it wasn't like one of those things where oh he like kind of flopped. It's like no, he was getting an elbow to the goddamn temple every game, and then he would just get up like that. That deserves a little bit more respect. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, at fifty two, the other the other big bonus is that like you don't have to worry about anything they can't do like 
Sorry, like, you said the like, other big bonus as if there was like a hidden Sabonis brother. No, no, like legitimately, like it's like they're 52. Like if this doesn't work, whatever. Like, right. It's like, it's like, hey, what can they do? It's like, well, the guy can score in bunches at all three levels. And it's like, shit, bring him on. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, there's a lot of guys who get drafted, and it's like, well, they can't shoot a lick. But, uh, you know, they can stay in front of their guy. And it's like, congratulations. You're now a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, right. I, I just 52. Remember, you don't remember have to Eric Pascal? I do remember Eric pa- Eric Pascal. Yeah, I, I, uh, I came across a video of Eric Pascal recently. And uh, oh, God. Not, it's not looking so hot. In another league, I think I saw the same one. I don't think I don't think he's in another league. I, I, you know, it's uh damn. He's uh, I liked him. He. He, he he's on a destination to uh destination big and tall. Let's put it that way. And I don't think it's the tall part. Uh, he got, yeah, it, it, I got it, it. I, it was, I got it. What I'm saying is he looked, he, I, I hate to, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking look a little hefty. <laughs> hope, he, hope, that. hope he's doing better. It, it, you know, it's a tough scene, man. Some, as we talk about with offensive linemen all the time, you kind of go one of two ways. Apparently, with Eric Pascal, he was just holding it back. Finally, they broke through the doors. God bless him. Um, okay. The Knicks did a thing. By the way, I got to say this I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of emails, like way too many emails. It takes up a lot of my time. I had no fewer than four emails today specifically asking about the Warriors trading for Mikhail Bridges. And I gave one thoughtful answer and then copied and pasted that into the other three emails. Uh, Cause I do reply to every email, which is why I keep getting so much. I know I should just, you know, it's my fault. Uh, my response was the Warriors don't have what the Nets want for Bridges, but he would be an ideal player. And as we are uh, preparing I know, sounds ridiculous given the content, but as we were preparing for the show, I look on the ESPNs.com and I see that Mikael Bridges has gone to the New York Knicks for apparently everything. All the picks. Um, for and what a Bojan, win. Bojan Bogdanovic, four unprotected first-round picks, a protected first-round pick, an unprotected pick swap, and a okay. second-rounder. Well, at least they got a second-rounder in there. Um that is a lot, which is to be expected. Mikel Bridges is a wonderful player. Not a lot of guys who can be your number one defensive ace, you know, build a defense around a guy and give you 20 points at night. So if you don't think Mikel Bridges is that good, trust me, he is. I got the Knicks. The Knicks might have something here. They, they I mean, they'll all be dead halfway through next year, given what Tibbs just did. To oh, them. yeah. But like, the Villanova Knicks are a sight to behold. This is like a hell of a basketball team here. You're like yes, one it Knicks is. fan. Use your words to express I, your feelings. To be clear, to be clear, I am not a lifelong Knicks fan. I should. Oh, that's right. Uh, you converted. So the uh, Nets. I'm not sure if people know this, but New Jersey is a state. Um, the Nets once resided. Bon Jovi. In the- Hallowed ground, Gabagool, of, things of that nature. Correct, et cetera, et cetera. Alpha Bagels, Randolph, yeah. New Jersey, uh, greatest bagel shop on the planet. They will be mean to you, and you will like it. Um, I grew up in New Jersey, and I was a New Jersey Nets fan. Um, I saw them in the Eastern Conference Finals. It was the first basketball game I ever went to against Miami Heat. They got fucking gutted. Um, it was Jason Kidd. Uh, Richard and Jefferson, Richard Jefferson, and Vince Carter, Keith, Keith Van Horn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the center on that team? Um, I'm I'm trying to think. I I feel like it was the white guy that Kobe detonated on. And is that who I'm remembering? Wasn't that like Kobe's best dunk? Or am I misremembering that? Oh, I just I can't. Maybe remember it wasn't Kobe. You talking Daniel? Maybe Tice. Was, that no. was Vince Carter. Well, point is. I was once a Nets fan. They left uh, for gentrified Brooklyn. Good for them. Whatever. They can go fuck themselves. 
Yeah. Um, and now they reside in Brooklyn, and I've been a Knicks fan, especially with the Mellow trade. Um, so how do I feel about this? It's a lot for Mikhail Bridges. Uh, that said, they had a glut of picks, and they're like, well, we can win now, yeah. or we could die. Um, yeah. And Tomorrow. Mikhail Bridges. Yeah. And here's the thing. Uh, Bridges was basically the same like salary slot, if I'm correct, as like mm-hmm. Bogdanovich is like mm-hmm. very similar. Yeah. Um, they might they're trying to get OG Ananobi back still. Yeah. Um, but Ananobi can be counted on for about 50 games and will probably miss at some point in the playoffs. Bridges yeah. hasn't missed a game since high school, as yeah. far as I'm aware. Uh, puts up 20, 24 and four. Plays solid defense. Just a more than very, solid. That dude's incredible on defense. Very, very good player on both ends. And wings win championships. Yes, sir. And you're you're telling me Jason Tatum's not going to be shitting in his in his Kobe shorts when he has to face him. By the way, I don't care that they won a title. The Celtics are frauds. I know they were the greatest team in the NBA, and they deserve to win the title. That said. I think if they faced a little bit of adversity, they would shit their pants. And I know that's not me saying they're not an excellent team. Historically great. I'm objectively acknowledging that. I'm just saying I watched Tatum curdle up like in the clutch. When when like I know it was mind games for Jason Kidd to say Jalen Brown is their best player, but he is. Like, like Jalen yeah. Brown at least has like a some sort of aura of presence to him. He can't dribble with one hand, but it doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, I think this at least... You think at you're, le- calling, you're calling Knicks Eastern Conference champions? Is that what I'm hearing? No, they'll probably still lose, but they will They will decimate the Celtics and take a kneecap with them, okay. right? And that's all you like, ever I wanted. Think, I don't actually need the Knicks to win a title. I just need them to inflict pain on Bostonians, who, by the way... I love the Red Sox. Like I love people from Boston. I don't know why you're caveating this. It was a good point. Their alligator tear, like their tears, are just beautiful to me. Like bring them on, because because they because they clench up tighter than anyone. Knicks Knicks fans are delusional. They're obscene, just mongrel obscene people, and right. I love them. And I love them so much. They believe that like anything is is possible all the time. Whereas. Celtics fans are like England fans, right? Where they're just like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I hope nothing bad happens. It's like, well, if you do that all Bring the time. Bring it home. Banner it takes 18. you 70 years to win a title since your last yeah. one. And it just so happened the Celtics had the best roster in basketball. And great. Oh, you came up against that that pesky thing that they did, getting all the right. good players on one team. Right. Great roster. Absolutely deserved to win the championship. Still, in my heart, frauds. I don't know how else to explain it. There's, Vibe wise, there, there's some legitimacy to that point. Um, I just think, know, I just think if the Indiana like, Pacers gave him a, a solid four, just saying, just saying, I, it's a hell yeah. of a trade. It's a hell of a trade, and I think we're gonna have a wild week. Uh, Jake, I want to yeah. do something here before we get out of here. I think you might now be the sicko of the week, but want to <laughs> acknowledge. That's right, uh, the sicko of the week. And this week's sicko of the week is this everybody who is featured in this GQ story (laughs) that has been passed around over the last couple days. I'm just going to read the headline here. We don't need to screen cap it or screen grab it or whatever. Um, (laughs) This is by Kate Lindsay. It was published, I guess it was yesterday. Uh, It's a big photo of Idris Elba from the TV show Hijack. Uh, headline why men wait, wait, are real quick. Sorry, I'm interrupting yeah. you right in the middle. Why, yeah, is no, thanks. Idris El... why is Idris Elba? I guess he's it's involved in this. Well, because they have a funny quote under it. Um, the, okay. it, it, it it's part of a bit and a joke. Oh, uh, the headline, right, the ahead. headline, my bad. The headline, thanks. This is, I mean, this is why we win the Marconi Awards. Um, why men are raw dogging flights and. This is a story written about men, strictly men, who go on airplanes with nothing. 
no headphones, <laughs> no phone. I mean, like the phone is off, I guess. No book, no iPad, nothing. And they just sit there and they <laughs> raw dog it or <laughs> go bareback on the flight. Um, the reason Idris Elba is here, Jake, is because uh, he did a show for Apple TV Plus called Hijack. And uh, the quote, uh, the sub, the sub caption of this photo is, it's uh, Idris Elba and Hijack, a show about a guy who struggles with having his phone taken away on a flight, which is not at all the story of Hijack, uh, as the title would suggest. I, I have used Apple TV Plus, and I'm also not convinced it's real. Um, yeah, it is, does not seem like a good business model. Apple TV plus so no, nine ninety nine, um, so that you can do this prestige TV show with Jake Gyllenhaal and watch that one baseball game a week where you're like, this is awesome. And also what the hell is this broadcast? Um, I, broadcast I, sent bit article, <laughs> I sent this article to my girlfriend who is, I just dropped her off the airport earlier on a flight. Yeah. Congrats um, on the girlfriend. Thank you. Um, but there's like a part in it about like treat culture. And it's like, and the guy's like, girls have good treat culture where like throughout this, the flight, they're just, they've got treats and they're snacking and men don't do it as well. And I think that's great. But yeah. um, what she These said, these guys is have like, nothing. Like, there's no treats. Right. There's nothing. She's like, I feel like it's his men just admitting they don't read, <laughs> which is yes. embarrassing. Yes. Um, listen, I think that there is something to be said for, the constant spiking of dopamine in our brains. And that, that's probably not good for us, that we're probably all way overstimulated and that we all just need a little alone time. I'll tell you something that's helped with that for me. Uh, get yourself a kid. You will beg for silence. I it thought you were going to say ketamine, but that's better. Oh, God. I, <laughs> what, what I wouldn't what I wouldn't give for, you know, I used to make fun of Zach Lowe from the Low Post podcast who is a lovely guy and a brilliant reporter and has been nothing but kind and generous and, and great a guy. blast to be around. He's a great guy, but he has a bit. I don't even know if it was a bit, but it became a bit about how he had one beer waiting for him in the fridge. <laughs> and it became sort of a joke at Zach's expense that like, hey, free agency's over. Everyone show show your one beer. What's your one beer in the fridge? Jake, what I wouldn't give for one fucking beer right now. What I I your whole world just is upended. And so yeah. while all of these gentlemen featured, uh, gentlemen is a strong word, all of these scoundrels featured here in this GQ story about uh bear raw dog in a flight. <laughs> bear packing. That's they also call it that. Bear it's balls. basically <laughs> yeah, it's basically any the flying raw, raw dog in bareback. It's anything, it's any slang for, you know, unprotected sex. Um well, all of this makes them our sickos of the week. It at the same time just sounds like a goddamn delight as the father of a toddler. What I wouldn't give for five uninterrupted hours of silence. And just nothing, just being able to do nothing. I get 45 minutes a night to watch one episode of Breaking Bad. Every other minute is completely scheduled. Not by any, but just this, shit's got to get done. And uh, God damn, God, bless, bless these beautiful, beautiful sickos. That, that's all I have to say, because they need all the help they can get. But God damn. Yeah. Um, my follow up is I got ramen earlier and had one Sapporo with it. Uh, one singular light yeah exactly and i'm not was... opposed to one beer as it pertains to like one beer with a meal that makes sense that that's right Otherwise, but just one beer over... alone just one beer oh i'm going to have you know like hey you gotta have to... two you gotta have time two. to let time to let loose where's my one beer one's just gonna give you a headache and make you a little sleepy you know you gotta have two there's no, there's literally you might as well have a non-alcoholic beer if you're having one. Like, li 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 generally, um, you'll sleep better. As as far as raw dogging flights goes, yeah. Have you ever um, even come close to doing this? I'm fully. I'm the opposite. 
I think you should be intoxicated on most flights. <laughs> not on not on most. It depends on the circumstances. But like a Xanax is the best thing in the world for a flight because you just get tired Gone. and relaxed. Yeah. And you just zonk out. And like taking one if you're like took one like going to like Spain over the summer. Yeah. A couple, a couple of summers ago. Um <laughs> is this great. not summer? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what year it is. That sounds incredible. Uh, I am uh, six foot yeah, nine. I'm terrible drinking, though. And 300 pounds. There will be no sleeping on airplanes for me. So uh, you're going to need a lot. You're going to need elephant tranquilizer to take my ass down. Um, I stopped drinking on planes. Yep. You're already dehydrated enough, man. And trust me, drinking ain't going to help whatever's going on whatever's going on on that plane. Um, I, I'll say this. I mean, this is, this is, again, a point of when you have children, you will understand. And those of us, those, those of us in the audience with children, you know, you know, uh, that's like, I, I watched two movies on a flight Ooh. recently with my daughter. Got to watch the holdovers, a delight. <laughs> just what a film. Um, what else? I don't even remember. But just like you're telling me that we all have to just sit here for a while and do nothing. You're going to watch your bluey and eat your animal crackers. And I'm just going to sit here and watch a movie. That's incredible. What an opportunity. And to waste it. I get it. Nothing sounds awesome until you think about what you actually did with your time, which is nothing. I'm a very you're, confused uh, and fucked up individual, Jacob. Maybe I'm the sicko of the week. The, honestly, the best thing in the world to do on a plane, Sudoku, fall asleep, oh. get woken up. And I, I usually bring big he headphones and then I download a playlist. Yeah. Some sort of like Brian Eno type, just wow, wa warbling through space sort of soundscapes. Yeah. And then you just sort of zonk to sleep and then someone comes by. Are you and sure you're go, on you Xanax and not another kind of X? drug I, I, you know you and you're listening to brian eno anything's possible um but then they come around and they go would you like a ginger ale you haven't had a ginger ale in three years or realistically since your last flight would you like for some <laughs> reason a ginger ale and you go yeah. yes i only only want a ginger ale and nothing else and if you offer me anything else i'm gonna throw my sudoku at you <laughs> this is why we have air marshals on planes now don't don't throw things at flight attendants. Be very nice to them. Very quick uh, point of recommendation. Um, I got. Uh, I did. I don't really read the comments when I go on Larry's show on Thursday, uh, because uh, I'd like to maintain some semblance of uh, uh, self respect. So I avoid those. But uh, I have heard through the grapevine that I was getting absolutely roasted because I. Uh, had the audacity to enjoy Coca-Cola Zero as a drink. One, I will make no apologies. That is my favorite drink. And here, let me give you a little tip if you're out there and you enjoy uh, canned soda beverages and you're on, <laughs> say, a Southwest flight. You don't need their ice or their cup. They just have a bunch of cans. And all you have to do is say, I just like the can. Because that cup, that cup, there's nothing in there. They're giving you like three ounces. That's how they're getting away with it. You say, I would like a Coke Zero, just the can. And they will bring it to you. And then another tip. as I've been on a lot of airplanes in my day. This will be my last tip, and then we will leave, I promise. Uh, you cannot believe how little cleaning happens on these airplanes in between. They all pretended for a minute during COVID that they were actually cleaning these planes. <laughs> Those planes are never cleaned. And I have seen, when I say some shit, I mean it literally on these planes. If you do not get onto an airplane, I don't have one immediately available to me, but uh, they make packets of Purell wipes or Clorox wipes, you know, something like that, just kind of like a thin package. or hand sanitizer spray and some sort of a napkin. If you don't wipe everything down, you're going to die. That's why you're getting sick on airplanes. Okay. 
That's why you're getting sick on airplanes because or, people are bringing their their service Shetland pony, real thing, onto the plane and it's taking a giant dump. Um, spray down everything on the airplane. Spray it down. What's it going to hurt? It takes you. It gives you something to do. Now you're not raw dogging it anymore. It gives you something to do, and at least hey, you know, you ain't going to get food poisoning because you know you're, you're pink eye because you rubbed your eye while going to sleep. Uh, you can also just wipe down that can with those same wipes. Or this same thing. If you're feeling like, I don't know where that can's been. I don't want to put my lips on that can. They don't really have straws on airplanes. Uh, one, you bring your own straw. They just pick one up from the subway. Or two, you know, just spray it down. So uh, that, or, that's where I'm at. Or yeah. you go the full opposite direction. Just start licking it. Lick it licking yeah. the seat. Licking the tray table. Yeah. Just eat yeah. up those germs. Um, that's... I think that's going to do it for us as uh, next. Our next uh, thing we'll be covering is uh, yeah. CONCACAF and, and cone uh soccer, which are all yeah. one nothing games in which uh, the firstborn child of yeah. every professional soccer player has to be sacrificed in order to advance to the next round. Uh, and the we're Euros. tearing. We're t- yeah. The Euros. Uh, the Euros I believe the leading score. This. I believe just, the like, leading, leading score at the soccer. Euros is auto goal which is German for own goal. And um, my God, <laughs> my God, uh, Copa America has been ugly. But Chris, just... Christian Pulisic had a lovely goal, though. He did. He did. If, if Tim Weah can learn to stop shooting the ball on his crosses, it'll. why is he doing that? Why does he kick it so hard? I legitimate, to... Jake, we will legitimately break down the USMMT in the next episode. Because it's not like the Warriors are going to have five days of incredibly active movements and that the Sharks aren't going to set the course of their future. And uh, Brandon Ayuk will probably, you know, do something else stupid on the Internet. Um, But until then, thanks for being sickos. Thank you. Thank you all.